I'm Anil Kumar and in this video we'll try to understand the significance of first and second derivatives. The question here is sketch the graph of a function with each of the following characteristics. We'll take few examples like this so that you get used to sketching functions from given conditions. So the first one here is f of minus 1 is equals to f of 3 equals to 0. Now when I give you that, it means what? It really means we are talking about x-intercepts, right? x-intercepts. So we have two x-intercepts for this particular function. One is at minus 1, the other one is at 3. So these points are minus 1 and 0, and the other point is 3 and 0. So we get two x-intercepts from this statement. Now let's see the next statement and try to understand that. It says first derivative is 0 at 1, 4. So when it says first derivative is 0 at 1, 4, that means at 1, 4 we have a turning point. Correct? We are not sure whether it is maximum or minimum, but definitely there is a turning point. So there could be a local maximum or a local minimum. Correct? Let's look into the next one, which says that the first derivative is greater than 0 when x is less than 1. Let's combine these two because that they talk about similar things. The first derivative is less than 0 when x is greater than 1. So let's analyze this situation. It really means that we're trying to analyze whether this function has maximum or minimum at at 1 correct so let's look into it again first derivative is positive when you're on the left side of 1 this is 1 so first derivative is greater than 0 means the function is increasing right means the function is increasing now first derivative is negative means the function is decreasing when you go like this that really means that this point is a maximum at 1 is it okay because it, the slope changes from increasing to decreasing correct now, the last statement here is about the second derivative. The second derivative is less than 0 for all real numbers. So when we say second derivative is less than 0 for all real numbers, that means it is concave down. Now, concave down really means that the function will look like this. The function will look like this, right? So, of course, at any critical point, where there's a turning point, we are looking for a maximum. Is it okay? We are looking for a maximum. And that also confirms what we did above, what we did here. Correct? So that also confirms that this point leads to maximum. Now, as you can see and understand from here, that these conditions were not required. Even if I don't tell you, anything about the <clears throat> first derivative on either side of 1 from second derivative, you could have concluded that we have maximum at 1, 4. Do you understand now? So in following examples, I may avoid this statement since this is redundant. Second derivative test basically tells you also, apart from point of inflection, whether at a critical number we have maximum or minimum because we can analyze concavity perfect so that is the emphasis of this particular uh, part of the video we'll continue with this but let me just sketch this now so what we have is a graph which is always concave down and we have two intercepts one is at minus 1, the other one is at 3, and we have maximum at 1, 4, right? Somewhere here we have this. So I'll just draw a rough sketch here, correct? Okay, so where the x-intercepts are at minus 1, this is minus 1, that one is at 3, and this maximum is at 1, 4. So this point is 1, and that point is 4. Do you see that? So these are the given points, and that is the graph which works perfectly well for the given conditions, correct? And you also learned here that the idea of telling 
that the first derivative is greater than 0 or less than 0 near the point near the critical number uh, is redundant if we know what second derivative is. Based on this, we have two more questions for you. So let's look into them. Now, you can pause the video, copy this question and sketch the graph of this particular function, right? It says, sketch the graph of the function with each of the following characteristics. Now we are giving you second derivative is negative for all real numbers. Now what does that mean? Second derivative is negative for all real numbers. Second derivative negative means the function is concave down. That is what it means. It means it is concave down along all real numbers. Now, first derivative at minus 2 is 0. First derivative at minus 2 is 0. That means we are talking about a turning point. Correct? So the turning point is there at x equals to minus 2. Since we have concave down, it should be what? It should be maximum, correct? Because any point here where there is a turning point has to be a maximum. Is it okay? So that is a maximum. And the value at minus 2 is 5. That means the point has a value of minus 2 and 5. Do you see that? So, so we have defined our curve we have really defined our curve. So at minus 2, we have a maximum. Do you see that? <clears throat> so you can now easily sketch this graph. Um, and we'll just make a very rough sketch. The only thing we have to take care of is that at minus 2, we should have a turning point, which is our maximum, correct? And in this case, it happens to be a absolute maximum also, right? So that point is... 5 and I should have made dotted line here and this is minus 2. Does it make sense to you, right? So from the second derivative, it is actually very easy to conclude whether at a critical number we have a maximum or a minimum, correct? So the last example here is this one. You can now actually, now here is third and the last example on sketching graph with the help of analyzing second derivative take it as a test question okay the question here is sketch the graph of the function with each of the following characteristics second derivative is less than 0 when x is less than minus 1 second derivative is greater than 0 when x is greater than minus 1 the first derivative at minus 3 is 0 first derivative at 1 is equal to 0 you can always pause the video answer the question and then look into my suggestions. <clears throat> now, let us analyze both these derivatives. So, for the second derivative, uh, what are we given? We are given that when x is less than minus 1, so let's take a point here, which is x equals to minus 1. So, when x is less than minus 1, second derivative is less than 0. Second derivative is less than 0 means negative. When x is greater than minus 1, second derivative is positive, right? So we are given second derivative changing sign as we move across minus 1. If second derivative is negative, what does it mean? Negative second derivative means it is concave down, right? So it means it is concave down, kind of like this. Do you see that? That is what it means, concave down. Positive means you can hold something, right? Think in your hand, you can hold something. Positive, correct? It is concave up. So for a negative second derivative, the graph will be concave down. And for positive, the graph will be concave up, right? So when we say graph, which graph? It is the graph of the function f of x, right? So we are talking about the function f of x. The graph of the function will be concave down on the left side of minus 1 and concave up on the right side. That means what? 
That means that at this particular point, we have point of inflection. Where? On f of x, right? We analyze second derivative to see what the function will look like on f of x. Do you see that? So what you observe here is that on the function f of x, if you sketch the function, we are going to get something like this, concave down and then concave up at this point where x equals to minus 1. That is what we are trying to say at this point. Do you understand? So this is your complete analysis for the second derivative. I hope the point is very clear. Now let's analyze the first derivative. So let's analyze the first derivative. So I'll do it in this space. We had been doing it for a long time now. First derivative, we are given two points at which the first derivative is zero. So what does that mean? First derivative is zero, it means it is a turning point. Now turning point could be maximum or minimum. Now how to decide whether it is maximum or minimum? So let's look into it. So let's overlap this with what we have above, right? So I'll just sketch it here to analyze. So, okay, so let me just draw a line here, guidelines, okay? So we know that the graph of this side is concave down and on the right side of minus one, it is concave up. So at minus, we know second derivative. Now the first derivative is zero at minus three. So let's say minus three is here, right? This is minus three for us and this is one for us. This is one for us. Now since the graph is concave down, what do you expect here? Since the graph is concave down, what do you expect here? Since the graph is kind of like this in this portion, we naturally expect a maximum. Is it okay? We expect a maximum. So we say we have a maximum at when x is minus 3, right? So, uh, but we don't know what value is. So we say maximum at x equals to minus 3. Is that okay? On this side, the graph is concave up, correct? So on this side, the graph is concave up where 1 lies. So obviously here, we'll have a minimum, correct? We have a minimum. So, so we have maximum at x equals to minus 3 and we have minimum at x equals to 1. So this becomes maximum and that becomes minimum. By analyzing the first and the second derivative, we can confirm it, correct? Now we can actually sketch without even knowing the value. So amongst the family of graphs, how should it look like? So let's sketch it here now. So it's very clear that on minus 3 side, we have a maximum. At 1, we have minimum. So let us say 1, 2, 3, 4. So somewhere along this line, minus 3, we have a maximum. That means the turning point will be kind of like this. Is it okay? Now, on the other hand, at 1, we have a minimum. So somewhere it has to turn, somewhere, somewhere it has to turn like this. We have a minimum on this side. And we do have a point of inflection at minus 1. So at minus 1, somewhere along this line, somewhere along this line, we have point of inflection. With that information, see how we could do it. So it, we don't know where it is. It could be anywhere. So let's sketch. This portion is clear, right? Just go a bit. And now this portion is concave down up to minus 1. Up to minus 1 is concave down. So if you come down like this, let's say this is minus 1. Do you see that? Concave down. And now you have to change the concavity, but turning at turning at x equals to 1, somewhere along this line, anywhere along this line. So we just turn, let me use another ink to turn uh, from here. So it's concave up. Do you see that concave up? Okay, not that neat, but I mean, so at 1, we have a minimum right there. And that becomes the graph for the given situation. So we do have a maximum at minus 3 concavity. This is point of inflection at minus 1 and we have a minimum at 1. So this is your minimum. Correct? So that is how 
you could actually sketch your graph. So I hope with this video is absolutely clear how first and second derivative can be utilized to sketch very accurate curves. Feel free to post comments, share your views, and if you like, that'd be great. Thank you and all the best.